What's up guys? Hope everyone's having a great day today. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to be talking about something that's going to affect the lives of not only us, but everyone around us. And I think it needs to be talked about more often. So I'm here to shine some light on it because this is going to happen very soon, a lot sooner than a lot of people think. And as you can tell from the title, we're going to be talking about sex, loneliness, and robots all in one, as well as the WEF's plans for our future as a population. And just a warning before we get started, this isn't meant to scare you, it's only meant to shine a light on these chess players because they're pulling the strings, so we need to also be aware of what's going on before it happens so that we could best prepare for this and we're not just blindsided by it happening. So in today's video, we're gonna be discussing the potential of sex robots and the consequences they might have on world population. We're also gonna shed light on Japan's herbivore men and how their lifestyle could lead to a significant population decrease. With no further ado, let's dive into this topic, guys. So firstly, we're gonna talk about the herbivore men in Japan. They're a group of men who are uninterested in sex and dating, to put it simply. Their numbers increased in the late 2000s, and they were found to be a part of a larger trend of people who are less interested in sex. About one in three men ages 18 to 24 years reported no sexual activity in the past year according to a new study published in JAMA Network Open. Between 2000 and 2002 and 2016 through 2018, past year sexual inactivity rose from almost 19% to almost 31% among men ages 18 to 24. This is according to researchers led by Dr. Peter Ueda, a postdoctoral researcher at the Korolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. One possible explanation for this trend is that Japanese society is becoming increasingly focused on individualism rather than relationships. It could also be the result of the high pressure work culture. The average working Japanese man actually works around 80 hours per week and dating on social media apps has also made the dating market a lot more competitive. This is a global issue and this is not just a single man's issue. Over 20% of the married men in the Japan Time study said they weren't interested in sex because they were too tired from work. According to a report from The Guardian, demographics experts predict that by 2060, Japan's population could be reduced by more than a third. According to the Japan Times, sexual inactivity among women of the same age remained relatively constant, rising from 15% to 19% over the same time period. The study also found that sexual activity declined significantly among men and women ages 25 to 34 years old, 7% versus 14% among men, 7% versus 12% among women. However, sexual activity did not decline among adults ages 35 to 44 years old. Now let's move on to the World Economic Forum, which has been trying to figure out ways to slow down the growth of the planet's population. This has led to discussions about the potential advantages of artificial intelligence and robots. Klaus Schwab's right-hand man and senior World Economic Forum advisor Yuval Noah Harari recently said in an interview that the WEF considers the vast majority of the human population to be obsolete, useless, and redundant. If you go back to the middle of the 20th century, and it doesn't matter if you're in the United States with Roosevelt or if you're in Germany with Hitler or if you're in, in, in the USSR with Stalin, and you think about building the future, then your building materials are those millions of people who are working hard in the factories, in the farms, the soldiers in the... You need them. You don't have any kind of future without them. Um, and now fast forward to, to the early 21st century when we just don't need the vast majority of the population. Because? Because uh, the, the future is about developing more and more sophisticated technology, like, again, artificial intelligence, bioengineering. Most people don't contribute anything to that, except perhaps for their data. And whatever people are still doing, which is useful, these technologies increasingly will make redundant and will make it possible to, to replace the, the people. Yes, this is no longer a secret and they're being upfront and open about how they view us as just another cog in the machine. And if you need further proof that this is their agenda, speaking at a panel and discussing securing a sustainable future for the Amazon, Jane Goodell discussed her Trillion Trees project, part of her quote-unquote efforts to protect and restore rainforests to help the climate. We cannot, we cannot hide away from human population growth. 
because you know it underlies so many of the other problems. All these things we talk about wouldn't be a problem if there were if there was the size of population that there was 500 years ago. For the record, the global population 500 years ago was around 500 million. The global population today is just under 8 billion. In order to return to the global population levels 500 years ago, approximately 7.5 billion people would have to die, which is about 94% of the world's population. As we mentioned earlier, sex robots have been touted as a possible solution to the problem of loneliness and a legitimate sexual outlet for people who can't find partners or who may face some barriers in sexual relationships. But there's a lot of controversy surrounding the use of sex robots and their implications for society. Proponents argue that intimacy robots can help remove the thorny issue of consent, while at the same time lessening exploitation and SEX trafficking, decreasing instances of predatory behavior, and perhaps even curbing the spread of STIs. But in reality, sex robots have the potential to do the opposite. A British study published in the journal BMJ Sexual and Reproductive Health revealed that sex robots might actually increase instances of malicious sexual behavior. According to researchers, sex bots might make us crave human contact more rather than lessening loneliness. They argue that eventually those who use sex robots could find it difficult to navigate a romantic relationship with an actual human being. The study also found no evidence that interaction with a sex bot would make children safer or decrease sex trafficking. In fact, it might normalize such acts to the predator themselves and therefore make such heinous incidents more common. Additionally, there's no guarantee sex bot will stop the spread of STIs as there's no evidence users will care for it properly or even keep it to themselves. Sex bots might offer a way to release some sexual tension, but they could never replace human contact. They might even increase loneliness and cause more problems in the world than they solve. Sex robots may sound like a potential solution to our society's sexual woes, but in reality, they might have more negative consequences than positive ones. It's important to remember that human interaction is crucial for our physical and emotional well-being. And while some people may find sex robots appealing, they can never replace real human contact, and I believe the advancement and quality of the robots will contribute to a decrease in population, which plays right into the hands of exactly what the elites want. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this video was enlightening and informative. If you found it informative and enlightening, be sure to drop a like on the video, share the video so more people get this information. And if you're new to the channel and wanna stick around for more content like this, hit that subscribe button. See you guys in the next one. Have a blessed rest of your day.